Appreciate you guys for coming out on a cold night. <laughs> Father, we just thank you for this evening, Lord. I thank you for everyone that came. Father, I thank you that you have a word for each one of them, whether through, through the message or personally. And Father, I thank you that they're going to be changed by that word. Father, I think they're going to be edified, uh, built up. Father, they're going to go away hope, with more hope and more vision, <laughs> more understanding. So from the house of kingdom generation, Nathaniel, our, the angel of the house, we bring you greetings. Holy Spirit, we welcome you in. I just speak health and healing to my baby over there. Samuel. Thank you, Lord. All right. Um, we kind of pick up a little bit of what I was talking about last time. Uh, so I know some of y'all weren't here. So we'll do a quick. I was just talking about where we are and knowing the position that you're sitting in right now in the heavens so you can kind of know what God's doing. Just wanted to continue that. I just have had one verse uh, that the Lord's been speaking to me about uh, for the last two weeks, and it's uh, Corinthians, First Corinthians, fifteen, uh, forty-two or forty, or one of those. And I probably wrote it down somewhere. Um, Forty-six. This talks about, uh, however, the spiritual is not first, uh, but the natural. So first natural, then spiritual. So if you look about or look at what's going on in our nation, even in our cities, uh, with the election and everything that's going on, um, happy or not about it, there's been a change of guard. <laughs> I'm happy about that. <laughs> so, uh, you know, the, but it's a, a reflection of what's going on in heaven and what's, what's to come. You can look at, at what's happening in the natural and, and know what God is doing. That's another way um, He's kind of made it easy for us. If you have eyes to see, ears to hear, or if you're looking, uh, then you'll know what He's doing right now. And for us, uh, I'm, I'll just talk to you a little bit about what this year is going to be like. It's a transition year. Uh, the Lord is um, allowing us to, you know, when you buy a new pair of sneakers, you got to break them in. But it's, it's not that you've never worn sneakers before because you have. Right. It's uh, this is a new new pair, meaning new position. So everybody in here, uh, as I've looked around, I know all of you guys hold some uh, higher positions than than normal folks. Uh, I can say that since it's uh, who's in here. <laughs> um, so it's about to actually taking that position and, and then the outworking of that position, so that you can be a son, uh, a, a priest unto Father, right, which is sonship. And, uh, and see it, the outworking of His will into the earth realm. So the switch right now is about uh, moving um, what has been or what is in the, in the natural, which is how we pray, uh, how I pray with the Lord. You, I go back and look at what was, I see what is, and then I speak to what will be because it needs to go back to what was. So I can see the dis disparity of the difference in those two and begin to administrate and speak into those things, declare. And that's what sons do. You know, you can put your hoe down and you rake and all that because it's, it's really a, a place. Of, it is rest. Uh, you know, that's a whole other topic. But it's, it's a good place to be um, because you're just being you. So I've said this a lot lately. It's the, the journey that we're on is about rediscovering who we were so that we can become who He's called us to be. And that's not just on this planet or this, and in this natural body. We're, you know, building spiritual things to the spiritual um, constantly. We're so into eternal things, not to things that are going to uh, pass away. So, uh, seeing the maturity in the room, you, I'm sure you all know that. So, uh, this season uh, that we're in right now, if you look at uh, um, the way heaven works and operates, there's... Uh, 70 days of grace, 70 days of mercy, 70 days of justice, and 70 days of judgment in order. And then you're off 70 days. We're, in the, we're right at the end of the off time. So uh, we're, the first 70-day period is about to begin. Uh, so the courts are actually adjourned right now. The heavenly courts are. This happens every year. It's the same cycle happens. You can count on it. <laughs> and... Um, as we are brought into the, the times and seasons of the Lord and understanding uh, the Feast of the Lord, not the Feast of Israel, um, then we begin to understand the cycles 
of how God, our, how our Father's working, how we're supposed to join into that so that we can do what He's doing. He's really made it easy. We've, we've compl complicated it. And everything we need is really right here. It's in these pages. Whatever translation it is or how awful the translation is, the Lord will always, His voice will always come through. So, it doesn't matter which one you're reading. <laughs> Uh, the, the, the Spirit of Truth who lives in you will uh, guide you into all truth. So, and uh, that's part of having ears to, you know, to hear. The Lord will, uh, will cause you to, to understand truth. It brings understanding to the knowledge that you have. So, um, so this, this year that you're, we're moving into, and we've already started, uh, it, Hebraic year starts in um, August, September. You know, it depends on which um, which Hebrew you're in, because sometimes they have two months of, of uh, I think it's Yule, you know, two Yules or yeah, uh, extra thirty days, because their calendar is different than the Julian calendar. So uh, you have to have your Julian calendar. We have to live under that one, because that's what we in this culture we have. But uh, if you don't have a uh, a calendar that has the Hebrew months on it and tells you where that what they're doing, um, you probably do you, do you good to get one? You can get one online, print it off. Um, so, staying in the cycle of when to meet Lord, Passover, Pentecost, uh, and Tabernacles are essential to your walk, and and you know the growth and, and whatever God's called you to do. I mean, those those are basic things that we really need to be doing. He's put it right there, but we've taken and somehow doctored it up, <laughs> doctoring it up. And that's bad medicine. So, uh, if we, we need to go back to those roots, uh, hear my heart, I'm not trying to strap law to anybody or be legalistic, but God does have s some ways that He's always been. You know, He's forever changing true, but that's where He's dealing with you. Uh, there's the ways of God uh, and how He brings sons and mature sons, how um, uh, He brings every generation into the covenant blessing and growing and understanding how he operates in the heavens and how that's supposed to have its outworking in the earth that hasn't changed we just haven't been taught that so uh, well, there was a fullness of time period that happened in 2012 went right in there there was two years of transition into that and two years of transition out of it and we're still transitioning because <laughs> god is good <laughs> but this year you know we've heard a lot about uh, a few years ago uh, one of the verses the Lord gave me is probably four years uh, that you know all the earth groans, all creation is groaning for the manifestation of the uh, sons um, who are us. So those sons are uh, the Lord is manifesting are in this season. That's what this this year is about. You're actually taking your seat in the places of government in the heavens uh, to take responsibility and and. Um, uh, outwork whatever that is that you you know is written in your scroll. Um, so that we can see heaven come to earth. So the Lord has displaced uh, powers, principalities, all that. That's all the election stuff that's going on. So we got, you kind of get a do-over, a reset. And this time, I, you know, I didn't get a choice the last two elections, really. It wasn't, you know. Uh, but sometimes the Lord allows unrighteousness to come in because that's what the people actually wanted. They wanted that and they gave him what he, he gave him what you wanted. He didn't go against your will. But enough prayer has gone out. There have been um, even in the last two years where I've gone into the courts and, and, and had prayer meetings for this uh, country, uh, I saw the books behind there, just the testimonies and the repentance and the, the, all of it, um, just stacking up, stacking up, stacking up, stacking up. And um, so I knew that there was a time was going to come when that, all that evidence was going to be entered in and there was going to be a verdict. Well, that just happened in August. Hey, hallelujah. <laughs> so the Lord hears the cry of His people, and now His hand has come to save. And how did He do that? He raised a man up, which you usually have to do because He's got to deal with us, right? He comes through us to deal with us. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, how, whatever you think about um, President-elect uh, Trump, does near, really near, neither here nor there. Our responsibility is to pray for that office. Um, and uh, you know because there's still some undecided things in front of us. That's up to us to to steer the course. That's what sons do. We judge things, mm -hmm. uh, but we do it from a different perspective and a different place than what you see on the planet. That when we begin to take those places, and that's why it couldn't happen before. There was no there were no sons, mature sons, or or a wave of them 
first fruits of those um, on the planet, and there are not enough of them because there's always some, um, to uh, step into these roles of responsibility so that we can see the change that we need to see. And because um, righteousness needs to come back to this land. And uh, I mean, I, I don't know about you, it makes me sick to see some of the things that are going on. And I don't know how we, we stand by and don't do anything. It frustrates me. I, and, um, how many times I've sat with the Lord and just fussed at Him because I'm like, how are we going to get this thing done? You know, <laughs> it seems hopeless because um, when He begins to bring you into truth, you get all of it. And there's when He starts to unveil things that are really going on. I mean, it totally wrecked my everything. I mean, I would, I was, I was almost depressed and hopeless for. I'm like, Lord, why are you doing all that? I need some hope because I was just like, I want. I don't see any way out. I know you're God, but you got to use us. And I see what they're doing. How are we going to do this? And he's like, don't worry, I have a plan. <laughs> well, we're walking in that plan now. He's going to do it through us. But it takes uh, enough of a sons, people that are mature, wanting to take responsibility, not have a name, not have a ministry, and uh, you know, do all the different things that we've always done that have got us nowhere. Um, it's time to do something different. And... Uh, the bulk of what I've done in, uh, in my walk with the Lord has been in, in secret or with a small group of people. And we've seen big changes um, because we, I believe it's just because we were humble, we were hungry, and uh, we just, Lord, what, what do you want us to do? It wasn't about, you know, making headlines anywhere or building a ministry or whatever. It was just, you know, 10 people wanting a, that had a hunger for the Lord and to see things change. And, uh, and actually, the Lord has, the, He calls them minions. <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> uh, tens of minion. <laughs> um, and He has those groups all over the United States. I started to see fires, you know, every state, uh, some much more than others. And uh, those were the fires of the, uh, um, of those that were minions or people that were crying out you know for righteousness that had actually heard the Lord that have actually uh, moved into sonship and when I mean moved into sonship they have uh, God has your total yes your your you know that's it's not this yes it's this yes it's the dying yes and uh, and then that's been tested right that's you know how you carry the anointing <laughs> it hurts <laughs> but it's powerful when it, when you've uh, come through that. So uh, this season is about being who God has been teaching us, but not in just an individual way, but in a corporate way. But that corporate way isn't expressed in the, in the church that we see. And that's, I'm not down on the church, but you know, when Reformation comes, um, it you know, usually doesn't happen in our church. It happens outside. Uh, God starts with a remnant and it'll spread from there. So we are one. Um, and I believe that uh, I have, I'm f fully convinced now uh, that God's going to get this thing done. <laughs> uh, and he's, he's, because I've met with the people now and I've, I've been, God's been connecting us with these people for the last two years uh, that are actually true sons. Uh, they're mature, um, wholehearted lovers uh, that are yielded, humble. Uh, been through, you know, been tested, fired. They're uh, they're whole. Um, that means we don't have issues. You know, we always have issues. We have you know, people. Oh, so we have y'all to deal with. So I'm gonna have it. <laughs> we have each other to deal with, and um, so there's always gonna be an opportunity uh, to grow more, right? But we don't get hurt there. We don't get offended and quit. We, you know, we walk, we walk on. We get up and keep going. Uh, I, you know, I just refuse to be offended. I, if I wanted to get offended, I certainly I could get offended. Anybody can. I just refuse to get offended because that's the bait of Satan. So let's, uh, in this hour, just, I'm, I'm so encouraged by you guys because y'all are carrying the same heart and for the Lord and, and have walked through the same junk, uh, how He gets you to a place where um, I just trust the company I'm in because I know the process that you've been through and you can't fake that that's a real thing <laughs> uh, or you wouldn't even be here tonight so uh, I confuse most people I talk to y'all probably get it <laughs> come on it's good to talk to people who get it <laughs> it's just uh, it's just simply about our desire hunger uh, 
uh, and in pursuit of Him uh, intimately that caused us to be in the place that we are. You know, I, people call me prophet, but that was never a, a you know a day when the heavens rattled and the thunder went and I got set into an office and oh, it's always meant to be. And it was my, yeah, I, I, I've stumbled into most of the things that God has allowed me to do just because I pursue Him. And, and I say, well, Lord, if they're not going to do it, I'll do it. I'll go. So, um, and all those things are added to my scroll because your scroll isn't, God doesn't have a the end on it. <laughs> and then, <laughs> there is a beginning. It's long ago. <laughs> I've seen the end some scrolls. I've never seen the the end. So, uh, you could add days of life to you, quality of life. Um, yeah, I mean, I've seen mine get added to, and I know other people's whose scrolls have been added to uh, because they uh, took more responsibility. Um, and, and really, if, if, we, if we really get, I'm really getting this this season, which is, man, I'm just, I got to show up and just be me. And let me, we don't have to even have a, we don't have to have a list to do anything. We don't have to, okay, now we got to go, we got to go up and down three times, turn around twice, <laughs> sing three praise songs, <laughs> for a few minutes no it's just about me uh, you and I coming together in a coffee house uh, your house our house wherever um, having a meal together uh, you know doing life um, so much gets done out of that because from the abundance of our heart our uh, mouth speak and, and mine's always about him and yours is too I don't have anything else to talk about you know maybe deer hunting but that's you know, <laughs> I work him right in there too. So, <laughs> uh, so everything is that's you know, it is the 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 base of every soup. You know, every time we get together, God's making soup, right? So, uh, I'm, I'm I'm just really encouraged at uh, at the season we're in now because He's really starting to bring the, that stuff around. And I'm starting to see the things I've longed for a long time. I mean, years. Not understanding that God says, when He says soon, you know, what's soon mean to somebody that lives in eternity? <laughs> yeah, all relative there. Hey! <laughs> so, um, yeah. Uh, but it's all good. I mean, year to year, it's been an adventure uh, in my walk, and hopefully, uh, you know, you're, it gets more adventurous. It gets, and I'm, I'm growing in, in rest with God and, and with, and, you know, finding my my place, and it's been more of me kind of looking at him, uh, and he's going, "You sit there," and I'm like, "Huh, me?" <laughs> but I already know what to do sitting there because I've seen him do it so long, and I've done it with him. It's just now he's gotten up from the place I always see him sit, and he's saying, "No, that's for you now. That's y'all are in the same place." So it's really about finding your place and just sitting, and you be you because out of the you know, out of that whole place, you're, you're going to speak life. You're, we're not, we don't have the mouth that we used to have. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> like Joyce said, our mouth got saved. Um, and it's not just, you know, yeah, I was talking to someone near to me yesterday and the day, and I'm like, listen, you need to change what you're saying. Quit talking about yourself like that. I was just sitting and listening to him for like, um, you know, 10 hours. <laughs> Over that 10 hours, I'm just like, I, I'm like, I don't mean to be picking on you, but you, please, stop. And, I, and then I would combat every time he'd say something negative that, got, that wasn't about him. I'd say no, but then I'd go down the, the list. And I felt that thing start breaking over him. By the end of the day, um, he had changed his mind about some stuff, or he's catching it himself. So, yeah, that's powerful. So I'm hopeful, because uh, our words create worlds. They do. We're powerful, especially sitting in the place you are now. I have to be careful. Um, but it's all good because uh, when you, you look at everything is, and you look for a way to, to up, you know, to build, to edify, to, you know, to bring life, um, love, whatever it is, it's all about love. Um, you know, I'm not a consumed with my pain anymore. He so removed it, I don't remember it, you know, that way. I don't, I don't dwell on any of that stuff. That campfire went out. <laughs> so uh, there's a new fire burning in me, and it's it's the testimony of Christ in me, the overcoming power of of every challenge that I had. 
um, he has risen to. Uh, and all I had to do is say, uh, yes, Lord, I submit, you know, please, Lord. You know, however ugly it was before I got those yeses out, um, they came out. And, uh, and as I learned the character and, um, and the love of God in a new way, uh, they didn't want to hurt me, really. You know, and then I misunderstood the God of the New, uh, Old Testament we call, you know, because He killed everything. You know, I, he, and I was saying this to, to Dewan the other day. I've w- walked with the Lord a long time, and the Lord has never explained Himself uh, in, you know, about some of the things that He's done, you know, that we read in the Word. Um, now He's come back and explained stuff that He's done to me. It, it, he didn't owe me any explanation. That's just how He is, though. Uh, but I've learned. Uh, he never... It, he never uh, justifies his character with an excuse or whatever. He doesn't have to defend himself. I love that about him. You know, what changed was m- me. I understand who he is, how he operates, uh, much greater than I used to, and I've still got a long way to go because he's huge and big and amazing. Um, so, uh, but out of that intimate walk, I, I changed. He didn't have to say anything. I just hung out with him, right? <laughs> what y'all do? how we find out who he, who he is. And out of that, now I understand, you know, why he had to kill all that stuff. <laughs> so, go God. Yeah, so, good stuff. Uh, it, they, they didn't look like us, you know. It wasn't us. It wasn't him. It wasn't in his image and his likeness. Therefore, whatever it was, it, was, it needed to go. <laughs> so, I'm all aboard for, for that. Because you can have the shell and, and be empty. I just, you know, yeah, anyway, um, so it's going to be, I, it's going to be a, a challenging year, I'll put it that way. The challenge, though, is, is going to be how you find that place of rest and stay in it, because it doesn't require anything of you like we've been doing. I want to do, 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 you know, do something for God. And he's like, no, I just want you to be something for me. I'll get a whole lot more done while you're being you than you ever will trying to do something. I'm like, okay. He said, the Lord said, Stephen, I know you or you'll do for me. You'll do anything, but I, that's not what I need. I'm like, what? <laughs> I had to ponder that for a couple of days. What do you mean you don't need? But I like doing that stuff for you. He's like, yeah, I know. That's my, well, an expression of how we love. And, um, and he still allows us to do some of the things, that, some of those things. His point was that I just need to sit with him. And uh, then when he gets up and leaves the room, people know that I came in with him. You know, he's, I've been places with him, done things with him. So when I show up, people understand that, you know, he looks like the big G. <laughs> and you probably shouldn't mess with him because he's carrying the same thing. I've seen him walking around. You know, he's influence, whatever. He gives you a favor. I mean, when God takes you around the heavens and, and introduces you, <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> it's like, whoa. <laughs> you feel like, it's like, wow, um, blows my mind. Uh, I just, wow, okay. <laughs> it's surreal to me because I, I know where I came from. Um, he's just a promise keeper. So it's the same way you are. It's, it, you know, last meeting was about, you know, knowing where you sit in the heavens, where you're operating, whether it's in the court as a, as a Lord or if you're, you know, operating in kingship. Um, and learning sonship, uh, there, there is a, a, a progression of how we grow. And in that cycle, you can go from glory to glory every year. Because promotion comes every year. And it's all based on what you do. When you go under the shepherd's rod in September, um, to the extent that uh, you're moved into your destiny lane, meaning that, that I didn't have to work and do a bunch of stuff, I yielded. But now the Lord's going, oh, it's not bad judgment. He's, he's going... Oh, now he's, he's closer and closer. Now I can release all of that stuff that he needs to walk out or bring his destiny to, to fruition on the earth. Man, that's a huge. Talk about getting frustrated with heaven, not knowing you know, what, you're, what I was created to do or having it colored by leadership or whatever that really, you know, so we fit into a, the mold. That didn't work for me. And uh, it, it shouldn't work for you. I mean, we've done that long enough. Uh, we've gotten comfortable. Uh, it's time to get uncomfortable. Really. If we're going to see the change that we need to see, we need to be uncomfortable. But in that discomfort, there's hope. Uh, I'm not just worried about me and my life here. 
we have children, children, grandchildren, 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 stuff I've seen and spoke into the future. That book is being written right now too. What I've spoken out and declared in my generation as I stood on the timeline is being written in a book. It will come to pass. You know, that book's what's going to be read. This is what has to be done. It's just like the Lord spoke, right? We're the same way. And uh, I'm less and less offended when I hear the Lord tell me uh, things that I'm going to do that, oh, I was a little taught, only you do that, God. <laughs> well, well, you got to train and reign, or, you know, train to, to be like uh, uh, Him and have His character so we can do what He's doing. Um, there's a, like I said a lot, there's a whole big, big space out there. I mean, you think you could just go somewhere by thinking, but it's so big, it takes time to think to get there. <laughs> really? Uh, you don't, that blows my mind. How do you not get there instantly, Lord, if by thought? Because it's way farther away. <laughs> but, um, wow, that's how big he is. So, um, I want to, you know, encourage you to, to, to just kind of settle in. Don't get apprehensive. Don't get in a hurry. Because you're just going to be probably doing nothing <laughs> for a little while. Uh, well, it may be, you know, we're all different and we all, you know, learn at different rates and God has to do different things to get us to where we're going. Um, but, you know, one of the, I diligently, what it says when work to find that rest, I diligently work to find that place of rest, meaning that I don't allow things to come in and pull me out of that rest. And what it, it traditionally has pulled me out of it has been men's doctrine, men's traditions, uh, you know, this is the way it's always been. This is the way you got to do it. Oh, the word. And somebody will take a scripture and just fold it into a hammer and just smack you around with it uh, without the understanding um, that, you know, you may have because you've, you know, walked it out with the Lord. And, and you know, the Lord doesn't <laughs> go and explain himself to them either <laughs> to justify you. You just got to take it and yield. It's part of growing, right? We've all been through that. And, and, um, uh, it's always life, but I believe we've come to a, a um, not the pinnacle, but a plateau where you, you just kind of, you got through the, the muckiest mucky part about being, about, you know, growing up and, and letting the Lord come and, and be the Lord of your life, then operating as a king, you know, yielding, you died of many things, you, you pretty much died to yourself, right, because your life is lived for Him, not for you. Um, you'll yield to him when he says to do something, even if it's to your hurt. Um, you know, that's a somebody that just you're in love. You know, <laughs> I love you. I'll do anything for you. Uh, which is actually beyond just the you know. All oh, this just feels good. I mean, there's I trust the Lord. Uh, he has integrity. He has not let me down. I mean, he's, it's a very tangible relationship for me. Uh, it, it's very much have all, my hope is hooked into to that. Um, it's just right, you know. Some there had to be something that's got to be perfectly right. That's un uh, unchangeable, irrevocable, unmovable. That's Daddy. So I anchor into that, and and it's always worked out better, even. So it doesn't uh, take as much for me to to go through some of the things I go through now. I'm just coming out of the culture that we live in, and getting into the heavenly culture. So that's part of the transition this year. Is uh, uh, and we're going to be teaching about that a lot, about sonship and what it looks like um, uh, so we can stay in our lane and, uh, and get where we're going. <laughs> and it's not about anybody ruling over by anybody in here. It's about us together, coming together, taking our piece, putting it down and going, now we got a carburetor, throw it in the car and let's go. <laughs> you know, because you got points where we need it all. Everybody has to bring their part for this thing to run. And um, that's what I love about yielded folks uh, who have humility that aren't out to make a name for themselves because those people, uh, you know, I don't have to come and say anything to you. I know you're yielded. And if something comes up, I don't have to go, now we need to, I need you to pray, but pray hard. What's the difference between praying and praying hard? Hard praying. I mean, <laughs> I mean, when I know, <laughs> I just know that you know if I got when I get when I got hurt, um, the people that Jill called to pray for me, I didn't. I knew that that something was going to happen because I know that God hears them, and I knew they were going to pray. 
Um, so uh, that means a lot to walk with a, a company of people that, that, that you can trust, that have integrity. Come on. Is that right? That means everything to me. Uh, it, it, we, that means we can, we can be real one to another. We can, you know, uh, not be perfect. It, it, we can ha create an environment where we can fail in, but not one that, that kicks you out or, or demeans you, but uplifts you. And uh, we grow together. I don't always get it right, but when I don't get it right, I'll certainly come and tell you and, and humble myself. Um, it, you know, that just takes flesh dying to do that, right? If I can't do it, then we're, you know, flesh needs to die a little bit more. <laughs> that sweet smelling aroma to the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was saving just a little because I know you liked it. <laughs> um, she, uh, but it's time for us to move into uh, while we're here. Let's, it's time to outwork what we came for. I'm, I'm, di I'm tired of looking and working and trying uh, to figure what that out, out what that is and, and, and try to somehow train into my, that position. <laughs> You need, you're not going to learn until you step into. When you say yes and, and you sit down, guess what? You get equipped. <laughs> it's like anything else you do with the Lord. It's like going, I need you to go to Bangladesh. What? Why? I mean, you're never going to hear another word from God until you go to Bangladesh. And as soon as you do that, I don't know why I said that, Bangladesh. Um, anyway, uh, and then you get your next instruction and he'll open up. Uh, that's how he works. That's one of the ways of God and, and His character. So if you get stumped, you know, I'd love to, to uh, take all the things that, that I know that God is immovable on. But, you know, the Lord said to me, I said, Lord, I, I need to take this, put it in, in writing form and tell, here this, this is it. You know, you can go a long way. There's, these are God's ideas, not mine. Just principles about what, how He works and what He does. And they've answered, and they're so simple. <laughs> It'd have to be Idiot's Guide to Walking with God or something like that. <laughs> you know, what do they call it? Stupid guys. Because um, they're just very simple instructions and, and things to do. And, uh, and they have absolutely blown out all the things I tried to do to, to, to get there or whatever it was. So, but the Lord said, no, Stephen, it's just like um, you can raise the dead in front of them. You, you can do miracles. And the next day they're going to find a way to, to say that that's not... Not so. Uh, a heart that don't want to believe, don't want to believe. And I'm like, Lord, well, I trust that that's you that's causing them to stay in that place. And that's, that you started to work in them. And I believe you will be faithful to complete it in them. So I don't have to you know, stress. Because God creates different vessels. Different vessels for different things in His house. Which leads me to the next scripture that I wanted to uh, talk to you. Thank you, Lord. That was good. You know, right in there. Ezekiel... Um, it's 45, I believe, or 44. Again, I probably wrote it down. Yeah, Lord. 44. Thirty-two. No. Uh, I, I can't read my own writing. That's terrible. <laughs> uh, anyway, we, we was talking about. Um, let me find it. Oh, yeah. Ezekiel, let me back up a little bit. Uh, I was reading this uh, when the Lord gave me this right when I got here. So I'm, I'm kind of looking through this. And I'm like, Where, what's that got to do with what we're doing? And he's like, read it again. So I read it again. It's just talking about priesthood, you know, the Levitical priesthood, who gets what, and, um, and who they're supposed to marry, whatever. Uh, some of the, the restrictions, whatever. The best of all first fruits of any kind, and every sacrifice of any kind, from all your sacrifices, shall... Be the priest also you shall give to the priest the first of your uh, ground mill and it calls a blessing to come on their house. So that's you right now. We're a priest. You know, there's a, a, a shadow of what, you know, the Melchizedek is. But this is the, the natural. It's 44 um, verse 30 is where I started. So it, this is another picture of what has to be the natural first and then the spiritual. Because the natural priesthood came, right, through the Levitical priesthood, and then the spiritual priesthood, which is the Melchizedek priesthood. I, 
uh, which is you've got to go beyond the veil, right? You can't take this body in there. You go your, with your spiritual body beyond. And hey, who knows? You, you can take your body as soon be translated. I don't uh, limit God. He can do whatever He wants. But, you know, first, your natural man. First man was Adam, right? He was uh, uh, made of the, the, I'll call it dust. It wasn't dirt. <laughs> Glory dust. <laughs> um, and the you know the second man's life giving spirit. So the first is always the natural, then the spiritual, which goes back to my point I was making uh, when it first came in. So uh, if you look at uh, if you read Ezekiel forty four uh, and you go through there, I'm like, okay, Lord, what are you uh, what are you trying to say there? And he's like, I'm, I'm giving you a mirror of you know natural and spiritual, and uh, you know when you. When you're a priest unto God, you give up your own um, generational thing. You, I mean, you give up your name. You can't have a tie to generation. Some, you know, I don't quite get the outworking of that yet. That's why I haven't talked about it a lot. Um, but I, I gave up my generations, so I could be a priest unto Him only, and uh, that I had no beginning, no end, like Christ. <laughs> Which is your whole walk, anyway. <clears throat> so, hopefully, I get more revelation about that. I, I will uh, when the time is right, and then I'll, I'll share that with you. Uh, but it's very integral to the next step of uh, of sonship and, and on to perfection. So, um, this season, as we move right now into um, uh, the new position that the Lord is, is, how do you do that, Father? Yes, here I am. You know, my spirit stays there. Because I can be in more than one place at a time. Yeah. Yeah, come on. Y'all agree with me? Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Y'all can talk back. Um, <laughs> talk to me. <laughs> uh, so, uh, you know, even while you're sleeping or while you think, while you're just being you, when I'm just being me and my dear blind, my spirit is being a, a king and a priest unto God. Right? Because my spirit now envelops my body, not my soul. My soul is not the... the um, uh, he's not in charge anymore. He, my, I'm housed by my spirit first. Right? It was body, soul, spirit. Now it's, now it's my spirit, soul, then my body. In that order. And, yeah. So, um, I can be doing other things. And I remember some of the things. When you dream, that's your spirit doing something else. For those that are listening so um this is not hard to, to take because and some people remember what they're doing some some folks don't i'm beginning to learn you know get i uh, or remember the things that i'm doing while i'm doing it and i you know like lord why are we here you know it's barely very rarely that i end up in paradise somewhere uh, you know sipping on hot chocolate or whatever you know? <laughs> uh you know it's usually something yeah Something that needs to be spoken into. Something that's an uncomfortable environment. If I was on the earth, I'd never go near there. <laughs> but uh, that's how it gets changed. The Lord drops you into a situation and uh, you're the change agent. So, But the things that we've been doing in our dreams even, uh, we need to be conscious of that because that's our, our spirit is awakening in a way in this season where we need to know what our responsibility is and what we're doing. Right? I want to know what I'm doing. I want to know. And it doesn't scare me that, you know, some of that stuff is kind of freaky. But as I, you know, I do it, I build, the, I have a confidence in, in, you know, how you, you know, you get a, you walk without your girlfriend or no girlfriend, you kind of like this. You Then you get a girlfriend, she's beautiful like my wife. And then you're like, mm, you got all cocky, you know. <laughs> Look who's next to me. She's mine. Yeah. <laughs> Um, same thing with, you know, with the Lord and I go play he's like, ah, guess who I'm with <laughs> and, uh, and I just learned to trust that um, it's, it's not just guess who I'm with it's guess who's with me <laughs> guess who I am you know I was in the shower tonight I was like Lord I, I, I am that I am show me the I am that I am that's in me you know because that I am right and it is because it's, um, it's, you know, it's Him coming out of me and, and affecting everything around me. And when you and I get together and you're, He's coming out of you, man, there's a multiplied uh, anointing called the corporate anointing. Uh, and, and that's powerful. 
You know, that's something about 10 people speaks to government. When 10 of us get together agreeing, man, we talk about arcing, you know, that opens a, a fissure, uh, which opens a door in the heavens. And then, you know, we can say, Lord, pour, dump something through the door. <laughs> and it comes. Uh, there is actually ways you can see things get done. One, two, three, four, five. You know, people say God's not a one, two, three, four, five. But there are things that God does that are one, two, three, four, five. I hate to, you know, break that theological thing that they've been talking. God, no, God didn't do that. He's talking about relational things. You know, he's not going to allow you to pattern him that way because, you know, how does he know you're doing it from your heart and not just, you know, three steps, right? I'm glad he does it the way he does it because I know, you know, he showed me things about me that I didn't know about myself. Uh, in, teach me how to love and doing different things. And I, I look at that and I'm like, wow, Lord, I'm so glad you did that because I really like me. I like that see th you in me in that way and then that outwork through me. Man, that's, that's, that's awesome. I gotta like me before you know anybody else can, <laughs> right? And I'll tell you I like me. So I don't mean arrogant. I was just, I'm, look what God has done because if you knew me, then you'd be like, oh, what God has done. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm guaranteed there's several in heaven. And the angels, yeah. Mm -hmm. They get it. They've been with me. <laughs> they need therapy. <laughs> so, um, but that's okay. I'm, I, uh, it's a glorious journey. Um, so to get back where, where we are, we're, uh, the transition is going to be about you just coming out of whatever work and stuff, even changing jobs. <laughs> a lot of that going on. Uh, our governments are, are turning over so the, the spirits and the principalities and the powers that were in the heavens that were sitting in our mountains God has displaced them so as you see that transition happening in the White House and in our state and local governments even that's going on in the spirit first the natural then the spiritual so when you see that established in the natural, that's a good sign to go, you know what, I'm right with your timing, Lord. I can begin to operate and, and, uh, and do these things. There's timing issues, guys. God, God is so gracious in allowing us to see what He's doing by what's going on in the natural. When I was first walking with the Lord, I was you know, repairing a foundation on the house. That's, he was repairing my foundation in me. And every, all, the whole walk has been mirrored that way. Whatever I'm doing, he, you know, what's going on in the natural is going on in the spirit. So I can engage with him. It's like a dance. You know, he's not dancing the jive and me dancing the waltz. We're, we're waltzing. Waltzing together. So, uh, and it's good when, you know, you get in sync that way. It, the, a lot of the frustration was I didn't know what dance he was on, you know. I'm just trying to dance a dance. Because out of my desire to, to change whatever, then I couldn't settle down and, and understand who he was. Um, hopefully we can, you know, I want to raise up people, mentor folks that, uh, uh, and I have some awesome hungry folks that are, that are doing really well actually <laughs> taking that. Uh, but I want a mass of, of that going on so that we can see rapid change uh, and bring many sons in. We're going to need all of them, right? I don't want the devil to get one. I don't think you should have one, not one. I'm not willing to give one of us up. Period. And not one is lost yet. Because this thing is still going. And everything you do changes all of your generations. So, then you trade that in. When you... <laughs> Come on. <laughs> so that work's not going to be uh, reversed. That's a whole other thing I'll talk about. <laughs> So hallelujah for that. That answers Solomon's question. Who do you know comes after you and how do you know he'll keep what you've done? That's what he's talking about. Who do I know is, is going to be in my generations that's going to pick up the baton? It may not be my son, my, my brother, whatever, my cousin, or third aunt removed, whatever. You know, who's going to do it? There's usually, you know, how it fell to me is because I just pursued the Lord. I didn't know I was going to, uh, that was all going to fall to me, but I was grateful to do it. When I, especially when I saw the life that it brings. Uh, that I'm just like bugging him all the time. More court, more court, Lord. No, no. <laughs> you know, it'll come. Uh, but I saw the entire, my entire generations. That's everybody that's been on this planet that has my bloodline that I came from move up into a higher resurrection. They come into a closer place, closer to the glory, closer to this inner city. Come on. Nothing kept them out. That thing that hindered was totally removed and utterly forgotten. Forgotten. 
Come on. So you're not, the word where God says you don't pay for your father's, grandfather's sin, he's absolutely right. That's where it comes in. Because people are going, well, I'm paying for it because I've got this. It's generational. Well, okay, let's take that a little bit farther. Do a little bit of work. I repent, I repent, I repent. <laughs> and watch what happens. It totally, you know, the demon of, of, of um, uh, mental health was in our, and I'll call it, it's a demon, uh, totally been removed from my generations, all of them. And my whole, all of them moved up. Come on. It's good. God is, I love the justice of God. Where the enemy thinks he got something. And he's gone and torn up generations after generations. He's got like 10 or 12 or, or 50 generations of, of jacked up stuff. And one generation you can take and turn that thing over. All God needs. Yeah, come on. That's exciting. That's what we did. And uh, um, so, yeah, that's, that, that gave me hope. To see, I started to see the enemy get destroyed in the place that it matters, and it, it, you know, and that's for me. I, things happen in the natural when it comes to taking the enemy down for in my life, and then I see it have its outworking around us. So that's kind of a flip deal, but that's good. But it's, but it's a cycle. It went in, it had to come out, right? What was has to be. That's why you can go back and walk on the timeline. That's what the priest did. You know, he went in, he sat on the ark which was a chair. The cherubims went like this, you know, which they, and there were other ones on the other side. There's wings touched. And uh, that was a chair, the mercy seat. And he went, bloop, right on in there. <laughs> to another dimension. Walked to what was. Got, and he saw that. He brought it back into what is. So the future of that whole year could be cleansed. But Christ did that for you and I. Yeah, wasn't that good? Yeah. Thank you, Lord. So that was on his scroll. Imagine if he didn't do what he was. We'd be in a mess, wouldn't we? I want to do what's written on mine. You know, do my part because we agreed to it. As ugly as things get, we agreed to it. Now, there's a few things that, you know, go along in there that maybe we, that just add to it. But I guarantee you everything that's written in uh, your book, you know, even Yeshua's book, he says, is it not written in the, uh, of me in the volume of the book? Not my will, but your will. Right. I'm like, Lord, that, I hope that sentence is on my name. Not my will, but your will. <laughs> and then I have the courage to... to uh, and intimacy gives you courage. Yeah. So, <clears throat> but just like Christ, we all have a dying to do. And it looks just as bad as a cross to you, right? My, my death looked just as bad. <laughs> so if I didn't do it as gracefully as He did. <laughs> uh, but for the... Joy set before me, I endured schizophrenia, whatever. And now it's having its outwork. And hallelujah, there is a flip side to this thing where you get uh, to declare the shots. <laughs> it's payback. <laughs> and I love to stand and look at the generations and see where the, this plan of the enemy and shoot over his head and just mess him up at every turn. It's frustrating. That's, that's my payback. You know, part of, yeah, well, that's another thing too. But yeah, you, that same thing is for y'all. You just got to go do it. You know, use your imagination a little and go back to that place. And then, you know, uh, we don't have to tie doctrine or theology around any of it. Just go have a relationship with him. Yours is, you know, I, I can't put the theology together for, a, for everybody in the body to have one relationship with God when he's so uh, unique to each one of us. Right? You should have your own. Go get your own. I got a good one. You can't have mine. Go have yours. <laughs> uh, but when we get together, they're identical. In that He has brought us the same way. Though it must just be different processes. Or, in, or hurts. Whatever we agreed to. But it all did the same thing. It all had its same outworking. So, uh, I'm excited to see some sons in the room. And uh, that you guys, I'm going to see you made it. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't easy. It wasn't for me. But you have to take some sense of, uh, of good pride, not bad pride. Right? And that, you know what, I surrendered well. <laughs> I, yeah, come on. I died well for you, Lord. <laughs> Might have been ugly, but yeah, it's, it's done. So now let's get on with the business of, of being sons, uh, which is to, to rule and reign and to see the outworking of what we need to see. The heavens, that's part of the, the, what we've been going through, to see the protocols 
you know, I, I'll just tell you all this. Courts, to me, you know, I can just declare stuff. I don't have to spend two hours in a courtroom in heaven, but that's how I learned to be a son. So that, you can't throw it out. I can't go, okay, I got a greater revelation now, and, and when I'm praying for somebody, I don't have to, I just speak to it, and it goes, but it's supposed to. I'm a son. I just took the courts for me to realize, hey, wait a minute, I'm a son. <laughs> Maybe it takes the courts for everyone to learn protocol and actually do and step in and engage for us to learn, wait a minute, this is who I am. I'm just, these are just me out re going over what already is, what's already written. I'm just in a play today, reading script, what was written beforehand, and, we're, and the only difference is the enemy's going, oh no, now they know what they have. Because you have all things, right? All things. And I've said this many times, every time I look up all in the dictionary, it's everything. And every all. So all things. He's giving you all things. Um, you know, I take him for that. He's giving me all things. How do I do this? It's about authority. But authority is about understanding who I am and then standing in that place and operating as a king priest to, unto him and not being moved by all the clutter and chaos and dead, dead, dead that the enemy's trying to pull you back down into. You are above it. That's why it's hard to offend me. I know that that offense calls me back down there. If I choose to be offended, I'm going to go fight with him down there. I choose not to be offended, and God far, fights for me right here. Therefore, I do nothing. That's it. I don't it. <laughs> and trust the Lord's going to take care of it. He always does. Because, you know, part of loving people are, are you know, not responding to that things because I don't have to answer that. Because, and I think that's what, what Christ and Yeshua did and what the Father does for me. He never explained Himself to me. Hello, why? He knows who He is. He doesn't need anybody to, to pat Him on the back or He doesn't even need to reinsure Himself, <laughs> right? In, in that same way, uh, you know, He's like patting me some days. He's like, look what we done. <laughs> you, you're looking like me. You know, you're acting like me. I'm like, thank God. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> um, so... It, all those things that we, every, everything that He asks you to do, there's a purpose for it. And it is glorious because it just causes you to become who you are. And, and, and it, you will be, you'll be able to take care of all the stuff you're worried about. If we'll just put that stuff down and, and pick up the, the call of intimacy, everything gets worked out. I don't know anybody that's walk, that, that has any kind of position in the heavens or, or responsibility as a son and it's, has an anointing that didn't do that. All they did was put all that uh, stuff down. There might be, you know, a few exceptions because there are uh, a few that are just bump bump. They get it. But most of us, 98% or 99% of us, thank you, Lord, have to come the other way, which is if you have anointing in you uh, that's, that moves in power, then you died to get it in some way. Had to be some dead flesh burning. So... And that's why when I go, I go places, people might not understand me, you know, but the anointing, they yield to it because they see something greater than the person in front of them. It's the person they yield it to. That's, you know. So, uh, and it's just about love. I, I love love. I love the idea of love. I love the idea of love being perfect, you know, about it being able to, to solve all problems where you don't have to pick a gun up or or a word, or, or withhold, or whatever the thing is, uh, you know, yeah, I just want to love out loud all the time, and like he does, and not, and be unoffendable, because <laughs> you just, you're okay. So Father, is there anything else you want me to, anybody have any questions? <laughs> you're like you're like just please be quiet <laughs> um, yeah, that was the point <laughs> Lord you're done <laughs> yes Lord <laughs> hallelujah